Good morning and thank you for joining me for this time of prayer as we begin our day on Monday. We're going to begin this morning with a piece from St Martin in the Fields called Peace I Leave With You. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. This morning's psalm is Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of those who scoff. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees that are planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither, in all that they do they prosper. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. But the Israelites broke faith in regard to the devoted things, Achan, son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things, and anger of the Lord burned against the Israelites. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth-Avon, east of Bethel, and he said to them, Go up and spy out the land. And the men went up and spied out Ai. Then they returned to Joshua and said to him, Not all the people need go up, about two or three thousand men should go up and attack Ai. Since they are so few, do not make the whole people toil up there. So about three thousand of the people went up there, and they fled before the men of Ai. The men of Ai killed about thirty-six of them, chasing them outside of the gate as far as Sherebim, killing them on the slope. And the hearts of the people failed and turned to water. 
Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the ground on his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening, he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. Joshua said, Lord God, why have you brought this people across the Jordan at all to hand us over to the Amorites so as to destroy us? Would that we have been content to settle beyond the Jordan. O Lord, what can I say now that Israel has turned their backs to their enemies? The Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it, and they will surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? The Lord then said to Joshua, Stand up. Why have you fallen upon your face? Israel have sinned. They have transgressed my covenant that I imposed on them. They have taken some of the devoted things that they have stolen, and they have acted deceitfully, and they have put them among their own belongings. Therefore the Israelites are unable to stand before their enemies. They turn their backs to their enemies because they have become a thing devoted for destruction themselves. I will be with you no more unless you destroy the devoted things from among you. Proceed to sanctify the people and say, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, There are devoted things among you, O Israel. You will be unable to stand before your enemies until you take away the devoted things from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall come forward tribe by tribe, the tribe that the Lord takes shall come near by clans. The clan that the Lord takes shall come near by households. And the households that the Lord takes shall come near one by one. And the one who is taken as having devoted things shall be burned with fire, together with all that he has for having transgressed the covenant of the Lord and for having done outrageous things in Israel. This morning's canticle is called A Song of God's Compassion. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. He is slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great it is mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made, he remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass, we flourish as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord is from of old, and endures for ever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant, and remember his commandments to do them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, beginning at verse 25. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind and your neighbour as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbour? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him up, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while travelling, came near, and when he saw him, he 
he was moved with compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine upon them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave, him, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. We say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. So let us pray. Lord, in the last week, we have seen yet more tragedy affecting people's lives because of the colour of their skin. Throughout his ministry, Jesus consistently spoke out against injustice and prejudice, calling the institutions of the world to repent. And so, Lord, we pray for your peace and your forgiveness to rain down upon this world in every area where violence and prejudice exist. Help us to challenge firmly, yet peacefully, the situations, the governments and policies, so that things may change for the good of all people, regardless of their colour or their gender. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the lockdown slowly begins to lift, we pray, Lord, that we would be sensible, mindful and respectful of others and of the law, so as to avoid a second wave of this terrible virus. Give your grace and protection to all those who work in the NHS, for carers, for those who grow, transport, sell and deliver our food. Make us wise and ever generous and help us to avoid waste, caring for the environment in an ever increasing way so that future generations may see the wonder and beauty of creation as we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world, for all involved in mission and outreach in these difficult times. We ask for your blessing upon our church here in Sanderstead and Riddlesdown, and we thank you that there is so much friendship here. Lord, please show us how to help each other so that the worship we now offer is the worship of a true family. We thank you, Father, for the ministry of Peter and Raywin here at St Mary's. We pray for our bishops, Christopher and Jonathan, and for our area dean, Paul. May they always be sustained by your unfailing love and be filled this day with a fresh outpouring of your spirit, enabling them to continue the work of Jesus. Lord, give us all your grace to proclaim the gospel joyfully in both word and deed helping us to fulfil our calling and to care for one another in an unselfish fellowship of love, to care for the world around us by sharing with it the good news of your love and serving those who suffer from poverty, hunger and disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all of us who have joined to pray this morning, for our families and our friends. Inspire us to work at our relationships and remind us to welcome you in every situation. We welcome those among us who are unwell. We pray especially, Lord, for Kim and for Alison. We also ask, Lord, for your specific blessing to be upon Wendy Lowther, Joe Wisdom, Barbara and Graham Harker, Chris Babs, Fiona Porter, Sue Ryder, and Rachel and Ray Chad. Father, we thank you that you gave us your son Jesus, whose life and subsequent death on the cross taught us the way, the truth, and the life. And may we always follow in his footsteps. May your spirit dwell richly within us, enabling us to serve you with gladness, on each and every day. Amen. Let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.